Hey Mike, uh, I thought I would explain the Higgs without writing anything down. Much easier for me. So uh, <clears throat> there's basically three things you need to know to understand sort of rudimentarily what the Higgs is. And uh, the first thing <clears throat> is that the Higgs, there's a Higgs field. That's the most important thing. The Higgs field um, is turned on in our universe, appears to be turned on. And um, a field uh, you've experienced before in a physical way, which is uh, the magnetic field of two magnets. Let's say you have two magnets, and let's say that the north end is facing each other, and you try to push them together, and you feel the repulsion. Or you put one north, one south, and you feel the attraction. You can feel it, even though they're not touching each other. Um, the, the simplest description of that is that there's a field, a magnetic field, around the magnets, and they are being manipulated as you get closer and farther. And because of it, it changes the energy, and there, it creates forces. That's a non-uniform field because it's strong near the magnet and, and weak far away from it. But it's, a, a, it's the electromagnetic field in a special way turned on. And it's turned on around this magnet because the magnet is a source, that field. Um, the, uh, what makes sense in the current theory of matter is that there is a Higgs field or something like it, some kind of field that's turned on everywhere in space. And uh, this field, everywhere in space, um, has an effect on particles. And the effect it has is not a force, because it's not, non it's not stronger someplace and weaker others. It's uniform everywhere. So which way would it force it? There's no force. Um, but um, it has an even more dramatic effect, which is it gives a mass to fundamental particles, uh, namely just the, the effect on the electron as it passes through um, this Higgs field um, is that it acts as if it has mass. It, it effectively has mass. Um, and that's the best description of, of the electron, a particle with mass. And the fact that it has mass means it can slow down and get trapped in an atom. Amazingly enough, there are particles. Uh, particles can have zero mass. And the photon, the particle of light, is a particle with zero mass, as far as we can tell. And zero mass particles always travel at the speed of light, according to relativity. Um, so the fact that the electron is in a Higgs field and gets its mass due to that and slows down means it can be trapped in atoms. And because it can be trapped in atoms, then matter can form. And atoms can form, molecules can form, which require the uh, electron bound states. Solid objects can form the universe as we know it. Um, otherwise, there's no matter as we know it. Uh, there are other ways things get mass, but the electron mass is, a, is crucial for the sort of structures of matter that we see. That's the first thing. The second thing you need to know is that particles, in the, in the sort of deepest description, uh, are not fundamental. An individual particle is not a fundamental object. It is uh, a vibration, if you will, uh, or a wave in of a field. So in fact, all particles are from fields. So the electron itself, the thing that lives in an atom, um, is a excitation or a wave, a wave in the electron field. And this is one of the reasons why all electrons are exactly the same. They have exactly the same mass, exactly the same spin, exactly the same electric charge, exactly, every electron exactly the same. The differences are how fast it's moving. And, um, and this can be in all, you know, in any direction, too. Um, but they're all vibrations of the same field. So for every particle, there is an associated field that lives throughout space. Um, it's, it's like saying there's a, there's a lake, and you throw a pebble in the lake, and there, a ripple goes across the surface of the lake. And you say, well, the ripple contains energy, and it moves from one place to another. Um, 
But the ripple is not fundamental. The lake itself is fundamental. You say, oh, that lake means you can have waves going across it. And so the particles, which we think fundamental particles, actually, they are the waves. And it's the field that is fundamental in our best description of these things. So um, that's the case. So take the Higgs. The Higgs field, if there's a Higgs field, or some kind of field that does has this effect, that gives mass to the electron, then the Higgs field predicts the existence of the Higgs particle. And there should be a Higgs particle. It doesn't necessarily predict what the mass of that particle is, but it predicts its existence. And so seeing a Higgs particle tells us what is the field, the information about the field that is having this effect on all matter. And uh, we can study detailed properties of the particle, and that tells us detailed properties of the field itself and how it interacts with the rest of the fields in the standard model of particle physics, which is basically just a list of all known fundamental particles and the interactions that they have which are basically all the forces in nature. The Higgs particle and field together itself actually represent the fifth force of nature. It's like a mass force. And um, you can exchange a Higgs particle, and that would be like two particles interacting through this new force, which is extraordinarily weak at any energies we normally live at, but lives just fine. Um, and at high energies. The third important thing is that uh, the Higgs particle was predicted in the in the mid 60s, really in 1967, when um, Steve Weinberg put it in the context of other speculative fields and particles that we knew about, and altogether it became the standard model, and it became the way particles of the standard model get mass. Um, explain the weakness of the weak force, uh, and uh, it took uh, Shelley Glashow's model that unified two forces of the model. And so that really it is, it's a confirmation of that model.